Pig X, ideas in the swine industry worth sharing. Join extension specialists and swine industry experts as they engage in conversations aimed to help producers succeed in raising healthy pigs. Welcome to another episode of the Pig X Podcast. I'm your host, Delaney Howell. For this episode, I'm joined by two industry experts, Dr. Mike Tokash of Kansas State University, who works in the Department of Animal Sciences and Industry, as well as Dr. Adam Moser, Associate Professor at the Department of Large Animal Clinical Sciences in the College of Veterinary Medicine at Michigan State. These two gentlemen will be discussing today the impact of weaning ages and management of pigs as related to their weaning ages. But before we get into that topic, gentlemen, I think it's important to share a little bit of your background with us. Dr. Tokash, I'll start with you first. Could you share with the listeners a little bit about your background and what your role is there at Kansas State University? Sure. Yeah, I'm an animal scientist and a swine nutritionist at Kansas State. I've been here for just about 30 years now. And one of the things that, that we specialize in is, is doing large-scale field-based trials to look at important questions for swine producers, such as the topic of today, like weaning age and what impact it has on pig performance, livability, mortality in the field, as well as the bottom line economics for the producer. And Adam, I'll, I'll turn to you as well. Share with us your background. Are you a veterinarian by training? Uh, yes, I am a veterinarian by training and also uh, received my master's degree in, in swine nutrition and then went on to get my uh, PhD in gastrointestinal physiology before joining uh, the faculty at North Carolina State University in 2008. And in 2015, I moved to Michigan State University uh, into a chair position. It's the Matilda Wilson Endowed Chair. And my research program, since I began my faculty career, has been based on the impact of early life stress and it's how that impacts gastrointestinal development and disease risk across the lifespan. And a major area of focus and my research program has been on the impact of weaning and weaning age and how that not only impacts early changes in the gut, but how this can have long-lasting impacts down the road and into, into adulthood and into subsequent phases of production. And we're, we're really interested in, in understanding the basic physiology and biology uh, that's going on at the gut level that may be causing some of these changes in health status in the animals. And Adam, since you opened the gate there to gut health and weaning age, I'll kick this question off to you first. But at a high level, why is this topic in particular so important for the swine industry to focus on? It's important because it's, it's a known factor that has, has been shown to impact animal health and performance uh, throughout the production lifespan of the animals. And uh, some of the early initial work that, that Mike may talk about from his group at uh, Kansas State showed the impact of incremental or minor changes in weaning age and how this could have uh, a tremendous impact on, on performance and mortality all the way out into the, to the finisher period. And also uh, some of these concepts in the field were solidified by more recent work from David Rosero, Tara Donovan, and Dean Boyd, who did field trials in their system over a four-year period of increasing weaning age and how that on performance and uh, health risks later in life as well. So I think it's something that is is well-established and it's something that is common in the industry still today because we have certain limitations on what ages that we can wean pigs. And so there's always a range of weaning ages that we're dealing with and trying to understand what is not only the short-term, but the longer-term impacts of some of these practices that we're still um, being employed today. And Mike, when you look at the weaning age history of the United States, 
how did we ever go about determining at what point it was a good idea or a good time to wean hogs? It is interesting when you look back in history that when starting out, you know, some 70 years ago, we did a lot of more natural weaning where pigs were weaned at eight weeks of age. And then the early adopters moved that weaning age down to six weeks way back in the 1960s. But then as we continued to make genetic and nutrition improvements, so we learned how to feed those younger pigs, the age continued to move down over the years. Uh, but probably the biggest change really happened when we learned that removing the pig from the sow and rearing the pigs on a, another site, that separate site production, could break some of the bacterial disease cycles that we had. And at the time, we thought that weaning age was an extremely important part of that improved performance we saw with multi-site production. And so weaning age moved down to, to pretty early ages and under 18 days uh, as an average in the United States, with some producers weaning all the way down to 10 to 12 days of age. What we learned, though, was that it wasn't the weaning age as much that caused some of those improvements in performance as it was moving that pig away from the existing disease source and breaking that continual cycle and having that separate site production. And so once we learned that and, and we had more research that started to get published, that showed the impact of weaning age on growth performance, we moved our weaning ages back up. And this really happened from about the mid-2000s up until uh, just the last few years here, where we're now about 22 days on, on average in the United States. But we have a, a big range of, of probably around 18 to 25 days with most of our production systems if you look at their average weaning ages. And Adam, I know you do a little more of the biology or could explain a little more of the biology between that, but when you look at a hog or a, a weaned pig from 18 to 24, 25 days of age, how does that influence mortality at the finishing stages? Not to get too technical, because I'm sure some of our listeners are not scientists or veterinarians by any means, but how does the biology change? So what we have shown in our studies is that um, it First, it's, it's important to understand what is going on from a developmental standpoint in pigs during the weaning period. So basically, it could be during the first uh, four to eight weeks of life. And there is still a tremendous amount of development that is occurring where the gut and a lot of body systems in the animal are, are getting ready and adapting to life, basically, outside of the womb. And in this critical period, is it's occurring rapidly. There are changes in, in gut development that are occurring every single day during this period, and they're becoming programmed. So what happens in early life during this phase is going to shape how that gut will function and be able to perform its normal functions and defend against pathogens throughout the whole lifespan of essentially of the animal. So when weaning, which is, is a stressful event, occurs during the, this critical window of gut development, it can change the trajectory of gut development. So basically, anytime you're weaning in this period, it's going to change the gut permanently and how it functions, how it's able to defend itself, how it may be able to digest and absorb nutrients later in life. And because this is a, a period where there's such a steep developmental curve of development during early life, days, uh, weaning ages, even if they're incremental day or two days, weaning can make a large impact later in life. So it's essentially very critical periods, window of development. But then if something happens during that period, like a stress or, or some sort of insult to that development, the gut is programmed to develop functionally different. And this is like a permanent change in the gut. So that's what, basically what, what we have shown is that what, what happens during this time is going to shape lifetime gut function and gut health throughout the production lifespan of that animal. And I'll open this question up to either one of you gentlemen, and maybe both of you would like to take a crack at it, but how do you determine or what's the best way to determine the correct age or the right age or the time when a piglet is ready to be weaned? Well, I'll take a little bit of a stab at that. I mean, what, what most productions are, are really uh, based, based around weaning age is, is on available facilities is, is a big part of the answer in terms of a lot of times it, Facilities have been built 
to have uh, around a certain weaning age, and you have to make a fundamental change, obviously, in those facilities if you're going to increase the weaning age um, and add more farrowing capacity, or uh, you're going to have to farrow fewer litters if you're going to increase weaning age without changing the, the size of the farrowing facility. And so that, a lot of the decisions are based off of just the facility constraints from the pig itself standpoint, we know that there there is a limiting, a diminishing returns once we get to a certain point. Adam's uh, work has been excellent to help us understand that a lot more, a lot better in terms of exactly when that pig really goes through some of those changes where you don't get some of those further benefits. And I think it matches up really nicely with some of the field-based research that shows that somewhere around 24, 25 days of age, we don't seem to continue to get an increase going up to further 28, 29 days of age in terms of wean-to-finish mortality. And Adam, you can help us with uh, that. Does that match up with your biology measurements of what's going on inside the pig? Yeah, so that's a great point. And trying to figure out from a Mike discussed the important economic impacts of, of these different weaning age and what the limitations are. And as we've been looking at what's the optimal weaning age from a biological standpoint, I think we kind of always thought about is w- what is the natural situation in the weaned pig? When are they typically weaning themselves in like a natural setting? And this this can happen like if pigs out in the wild, you know, this may not really happen until about up to eight weeks age. So eight or 12 weeks of age when, until they're fully weaned from their mom. So kind of first understanding how different weaning and commercial production is kind of gives us some insight. And also during this time, thinking about how long does it take the gut to develop during early life? And some of the work that has been shown uh, indicates that it may not be until three months of age until that gut is fully developed and begins to to kind of take on a more adult function of the gut. So in that sense, when considering just the biological basis of weaning, it would it would seem the later you can wean the pig, the better. Um, but we've done some some experiments where we were looking at some physiological variables in, in gut health, one, one of them being intestinal barrier function, which is how leaky the intestinal um, lining or epithelial cells in the gut are, which is an, an important defense mechanism in the gut. And we compared different weaning ages between 15-day uh, weaning ages compared to all the, all the way up to 28 days of weaning age. And what we, what we saw was graded increases in wean age led to significant improvements in later life intestinal barrier function or defense. And uh, what, what, we, what it looked like was that there was a, an inflection point at about 24 to 25 day weaning point where we saw up to that, the most improvements. And then after that, we still got graded improvements, but they weren't as, as dramatic. So it seems like that 25 to 28 day range is a, is from a practical standpoint, that, that seems like a, a period where we saw the most improvement up to that point um, as far as creating a situation of longer term gut health and development. I think another area that, that plays into this is, is the health status of the pig and, and what challenges that they face. I, I think the work that Adam's done is, has done a great job of showing us the mechanisms of why these problems occur with early weaning ages, but we're also finding that some production systems, when they've tested increasing weaning age for themselves, if they have very, very low wean to finish mortality, and I do want to make sure that ever, all the listeners understand this isn't uh, uh, all of our production systems by any means, but when we have production systems that are under like 4% wean to finish mortality, they don't see as much benefit of increasing their weaning age, which would be expected because if you don't challenge that pig, some of those impairments in, in intestinal function that that Adam's talking about are not as important in finishing performance and mortality, but certainly any of those pigs that undergo health challenges in the nursery or the finishing, that's when the weaning age increases really come through and, and provide value. Yeah, that's a that's an excellent point because 
We, we see that as well, even in our research studies where animals, when they're grown in a, a high, high health environment, as, as Mike was indicated, you know, we may not see any adverse effects on performance or even disease risk. However, at the gut level, these changes are, are very sensitive and, and they are occurring. But you, a lot of times, in order to see that impact of, of wean age, you really need a second hit that happens. So a second stressor, a, a second challenge that you may see those changes start manifesting clinically in uh, performance or, or elevated disease risk. So I, I think about the weaning ages as an early weaning age will increase your risk for maybe exhibiting performance reductions or increased disease, but it really takes the environment to play such an important role in, in whether or not those, those effects are going to be brought out, but they are going to be impacting the animal at, at the physiological level, no matter what, but that second, that second hit in disease status in the herd is, is absolutely critical. So I, I agree with Mike. That's, that's important. And that's what we've also been able to show support that in, in some of our more basic science work. All right, so we've covered a lot of ground so far in this episode, but let's recap on some of the highlights. First and foremost, the later you can wean the pig, the better is generally a good rule of thumb. But as Adam was sharing just prior to the break, animals that are grown in high health environments sometimes miss out on the value of the later weaning ages. Producers may implement a younger weaning age and have a low mortality rate, in which instance it can sometimes be hard to find the benefit of weaning that piglet a little later. However, as Adam stated, a piglet's gut health could still be drastically impacted and other stressors could appear, making a large impact on a piglet's life. So let's dive back in and talk a little bit more about gut health. For clarification purposes, or just so that everybody's on the same page with verbiage and whatnot, Adam, you mentioned a lot about the gut level health and the differences between a weaned pig and maybe a pig that's three to four months old. When you look at gut health or a fully developed pig based on gut level compared to a weaned pig who's not fully developed yet, what are the biological or physiological differences between those two pigs or two ages of pigs? Yeah, that's a really good question. And we're still trying to to understand. Uh, we've we we think about gut health in many terms. One of the major, uh, arguably one of the most critical functions of the gut, is a defense barrier, because the gut is essentially the largest interface between the animal and the outside world. The surface area of our gastrointestinal tracts. Are, is pretty vast and significant. It does represent a larger surface area, even more so than the skin. And so one of its major properties or functions is defense to prevent all the trillions of bacteria, toxins, microorganisms that are within the intestinal lumen from getting into access inside the body. And that's what we term barrier function. So that's one of the readouts that we look at in our research program is how leaky or how permeable the gut is. And that's an important function. We've shown that when animals are stressed, the gut becomes more leaky. And this allows potentially uh, all the bacteria and some of the toxins or antigens that are within the gut lumen at that time can now get across the gut into the body and cause things like inflammation that are going to compromise the health of that animal. And we've also shown that uh, weaning age has a big, big role in determining how leaky your gut is going to be throughout the lifespan. And we've shown that uh, an earlier weaning age, let's say, for example, pig weaned at, at 16 days of age compared to a pig weaned at even uh, like say 24 days of age, if you grow those animals up into the finisher phase, the early weaned animals, the 16 day weaned animals are going to have more increased intestinal permeability compared to the late weaned animals. So that's, that's one of the functions that, that we've been 
really interested in because it's so critical to health of the animal. And we're going to talk more about another function in a moment, but first I wanted Adam to dive a little deeper into a term you've heard quite a bit throughout the episode, leaky gut. One of the major roles of the gut is to to prevent the components or, or bacteria and toxins that are normally residing in the intestine from getting across the body. So it's a barrier function and it's, and it's performed by the cells that are lining the gut. So when the stress or the animal is exposed to a stress or a challenge, this lining becomes porous. And I use the term leaky because there, there are actually little gaps now in between the cells that are lining the gut that now are going to allow bacteria products and maybe feed antigens to now get across this barrier because there's now whole, essentially little uh, microscopic holes in this barrier in between the cells. So that's why I use the term leaking of these products across the gut wall. So it just becomes kind of a porous, basically gaps that occur that now limit their, the ability to prevent bacteria from getting across the gut. So we term that as leaky gut. All right, now that we've got a good understanding of leaky gut, let's continue on with the second functionality of the gut. But the other functions include the ability to digest and absorb nutrients efficiently, which is going to contribute to feed efficiency and performance. And we're now trying to understand how wean age can impact the development of of the gut's ability to, to efficiently digest and absorb nutrients as well. So there are several different functions of the gut that are involved in defense and also assimilation or digestion absorption of nutrients that we really have to take a multi-discipline approach to understanding what gut health really means because there are so many different roles that the gut plays that we really have to assess all of them. And then we also have to understand, we're trying to understand now, which of those measurements are going to be most predictive of some impaired performance or increased disease risk. And that's that's still an area of of research that we're trying to understand. So like biomarkers, what are what are some biomarkers or or just things that we can measure in the blood of these animals that that are going to maybe predict either how well the gut has developed and then whether or not these animals are going to be more at risk to a later life challenge. And we've been spending quite a bit of time obviously talking about the biological or physiological aspect of it, but Mike, tell us a little bit more about the economic aspect of the importance of weaning ages. Well, and this is a good question because it, obviously the bottom line of the producer is, is what we're really after in terms of what impact does it have on the pig's performance in the in the nursery and growth finish stages, and then the dollars and cents? And what we see in the is, is, is they said there is some variation in these responses. But if you look at the published literature from Roger Main's work, from some of the work that from Hanor and Pipestone, and from uh, the work that the Brazilians have done recently, some ballpark numbers that you can keep in mind is for each day increase in weaning age, uh, we increase the weight out of the farrowing house by about a half a pound per pig. We increase the weight out of the nursery by about two pounds per pig. And then you increase the weight sold per pig weaned by around three to four pounds per pig. And and part of that increased weight sold is because we reduce the mortality rate by about a half a percent for each day increase in weaning age. And that's going from around, a, uh, all the way down from a 12 day on average up to about a 25 to 26 day on average. Once we get past that 25 days, we don't see that continual improvement at that rate of, of improvement. Uh, what that means in it, from an economic perspective depends a lot in terms of what how producers are marketing their pigs. If you're marketing in a in a normal conventional situation, uh, we see that it's probably around a 50 to 60 cents uh, per pig. Uh, what each of those days of increased weaning age is worth. 
But if you're looking at a at like an antibiotic-free situation, as an example, where you get a premium for any pig that, that doesn't have to be treated, uh, we know that increasing the weaning age reduces the number of, of pigs that have to be treated with antibiotics in the wean to finish stage also. And so that can increase that value all the way up to about a dollar and seventy cents per day, um, what we've seen in some of the antibiotic-free uh, programs out there. And we've been talking about a lot of different subjects, a lot of different points as related to gut health as well as weaning age. When you look at a wrap up here of some takeaways, what are maybe one or two takeaways or things that producers or folks who work within the swine industry should take away or think about as related to this episode? Well, for me, the the, uh, biggest thing is, is that you want to maximize the weaning age within your given situation first. And so that means that, that utilizing your farrowing facility uh, as efficiently as possible. And I know most producers try to do this already, but think about any decreased open days you have in the farrowing house or minimizing the number of days that a gestating sow spends in a farrowing crate and that, she, that it's a lactating sow that is, is in there. And consciously think about anything you do that reduces the age of that pig at weaning, knowing what its impact does, has on downstream production. And then you want to think about how can you increase the weaning age, if whether that's adding more farrowing space, if that's a, a possibility, or whether it's, you do want to think about reducing the number of farrowings. That's really, reducing the number of farrowings, though, is really only economical for most producers if you're getting a pretty high premium on the value of that pig. Even though we talk about some of these downstream performance impacts, it's difficult to pencil it out if you decrease the number of pigs that you're producing. Yeah, and uh, for me... I think one of the biggest take home points is in situations where you may not be able to impact wean age significantly as, as Mike was indicated, which is very common, trying to understand why earlier weaning ages have long term consequences on the animal. And one of the biggest things is, is about the stress level that is on these animals during the weaning process. And it's really the stressors and the combined effect of these stressors at the weaning period that are going to change the physiology of that gut for the long term. So if there is any way to reduce the stress in these animals or are considering factors to alleviate, even if it's one or two stressors during this critical period of development, it's going to have some long-term benefits. And stressors in the environment are many. Not only is it the weaning process, but it's temperature control. It's the presence and load of pathogens in the environment. It's potential moving and and sorting of animals. So these social stressors that are occurring uh, on a daily basis, if you can pay attention and reduce the stress level as much as possible during these times, that could have an impact on long-term development and, and development of the gut. 25 days. That's really the key age here where the greatest benefit of increased weaning age is attained. However, it's important to remember that every operation varies just slightly. Well, that does it for another episode of the Pig X podcast. Please be sure to leave us a rating and review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this episode on so we can better tailor our content to meet the needs of your operation. On the next episode of Pig X, we tackle the people factor. Until then, I'm Delaney Howell, and this has been the Pig X Podcast. Pig X is a national podcast hosted by the Pig Livability Project partners at Iowa State University, Kansas State University, and Purdue, and supported by the Iowa Pork Industry Center. For more information on the project, head to www.piglivability.org or to inquire directly with questions regarding the project, email ipic at iastate.edu. Pig X, ideas in the swine industry worth sharing.